And we've been uh, really fair to Chris, you know, and he, he understands that and he appreciates that. But it's now time for Chris to uh, to go back to Woodville West Torrens in. Um, you know, his his effort's been still been there, but in terms of him being able to to uh, probably have the influence that we want him to have for the stature of player that he is, uh, we just believe that after a period of time, it's time for him to go back. And had a good discussion with him yesterday. Understands the reasons why and uh, he's looking forward to getting back into better form and, and coming back into our side because he's you know he's a seven year player now and so we need those guys up and running but we just can't afford to you know if, if the results are not there that's that's you will have selection available to me that's not what reflective of your season that, that seven year sort of player the ones that you expect to be giving you a you know, break even game at week in week out yeah yeah that, that's i reckon that's a fair call you know in as a general snapshot yeah. you know without sort of going through each individual player that's in that category that would be a fair snapshot that uh, you know that that quality of player, that experience of player, has sort of mirrored our image to a certain extent. People say his foot skills have been letting him down. Here. Yeah, no, that's one of the things I spoke to him about, Corey. Is the um, it was probably two or three weeks ago. I think he probably would have had what we would call a benchmark game for Chris. You know, he had an opportunity on shots on goal, but uh, didn't get any of them. Um, some of his kicking into the forward into the forward line, you know, is not to the standard that we know he can do. So some of it's not just, as I said, it's not effort. It's sometimes just about the execution of the skills. So, uh, and therefore, often it's better to go back to the SANFL to hone those and, and then come back. Neil, I know uh, there were six changes, four of them you've decided to make. Yep. Is that a statement from the result of last week or has it just been the fact that this point in time, say, so you've given nights enough time to give yeah. it up? Is there no, a coincidence in that or is yeah. it a statement? No, it's, no, it's more over time. You know, what have we got? Knights, uh, Luke Thompson, Sean McKernan, uh, Jack Gunson's sort of been up and down a bit. But it's more about, you know, they've had a block of footy there to what we think, you know, has enabled, been long enough to enable them to play some, some reasonable football and the time's now come to make those changes. So... That's rather than just, you know, from last week. Daniel, Daniel Talia, big raps when you draft him. Uh, yeah. What can we expect from him tomorrow? Well, um, he's, uh, what's he, he played, he's played a, f you know, a few weeks in the SNFL now, Corey, and his game last week in particular was very good. So, I mean, he'll come in and he'll play as one of our bigger defenders. Uh, what do I expect of him? I expect him to play a benchmark for a benchmark game for Daniel, you know, which will be different. His benchmark will look different to uh, to Ben Rutten's, of course, but uh, he'll obviously, you know, um, stand some of their bigger forwards, get an opportunity to do that. So I'm really pleased for Daniel. He's got a great work ethic, loves his footy, um, you know, as, as in terms of preparation, as good as any in the club. He's been unlucky with some injuries, but he's been able to overcome that Achilles injury um, recently. And so now he gets his opportunity. So I think he's something like the 36th or 7th player that we've played this year. So. Would, you, would you dare to give him a go at someone like Adam Goods? Uh, if, if, if it pans out that way, depending where, where Goods plays, you know, and how high up the ground that he plays. I certainly wouldn't want uh, Daniel to take Goods up if he ventures up into the midfield. But if he, if he plays deep, you know, there's an expectation that he might have to do that. So that, that'll be an experience for him. How will the side, side handle weather if it's wet tomorrow, which sort of showers up? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a pretty poor night, Graham, doesn't it? With the weather and the wind. Same for both sides. We've, we've played some good football in, in wet weather previously with this squad. So, um, you know, your, your game certainly has to change to a certain extent with your ball movement and uh, some of your defensive action. But we've, we've already spoken about that in our team meeting today, so... That you doesn't phase us too much. You obviously had a hit out this morning. Any late problems for anyone or, or hunky dory? Yeah, no. Uh, at this stage, um, everything looks fine, Tom, in terms of the twenty, the twenty-two that we've selected. Um, so uh, I don't expect any any late changes there in our in our twenty-two. I know this management that I'm going and you and me regularly about it. But in regards to casting your eye forward, at what stage of the year, if not already, or where are you at in regards to maybe some blokes and they are on that cusp of where the next eight weeks could be very telling for them more so than others? Yeah, I mean, we've we've had th those discussions, in are ongoing in our footy club. Um, but now, you know, the time is becoming less and less. So we, we've had discussions along those lines with a, a certain number of players that need, we're saying, need to do a bit more. And here's an opportunity to still, you know, time-wise, you still have an opportunity. But it, it could also run out as well. So... 
And that's, that's the way we want to do it here. We don't want to sort of wait till the end of the year. If you're, say, if you're one of the players that we're talking about, we don't want to wait till the end of the year, and I'm sure you don't want to wait till the end of the year where we, you, know, you walk into my office and say, Ian, it's all finished. You know, you're immediately responsible, well, you know, why, why didn't you talk to me about this halfway through the year or, you know, with seven or eight games to go? And that's exactly how we do it. So to give people an opportunity to respond to the best of their ability um, because we're dealing with people's occupations here. You know, so it's, it's, not a, it's not a weekend game. Can you give us a snapshot as to how many players might have had that discussion? No, I don't, I don't want to divulge that information. Um, all I'm happy to say to our supporters is that those conversations uh, have occurred and will continue to occur. Have you um, put a line through anyone? No. no. Neil, you, uh, Rob mentioned yesterday that you meet monthly with the board. He said that was going to happen last night. I know you do it regularly anyway. Yeah. But, um, that go? Those discussions, Tom, are... Uh, I mean, the board meeting is uh, is is fairly quick and precise. You know, uh, lengthy conversations. Not every day, but for example, the week gone by. You know, spent I've, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time talking to Stephen Trigg. Long discussion with Rob Chapman um, last week on the phone. So that's as I said last week. I think there was a question from here about. It's not, it's not as if they sit over there, guys, and we sit here and we don't communicate or see each other until board meetings. I mean, those discussions are ongoing all the time. And uh, they're open discussions, they're candid, they're, uh, they're unconditional, you know, about the, you know, the situation and the topics that are discussed. It's a, it's a very healthy environment for those discussions to take place, Tom. Yeah. Um, no, well, certainly the communication, Graham, is, is I think, a demonstration of the professionalism of the management of our footy club. Um, in good times and in bad times. That's, that's, I've only ever known that to be of the highest standard. And what that enables you to do, of course, is, is to have the difficult conversations if they need to be had. And so does that help the situation? Probably does, you know, because you're, not, you're never left wondering. You know, if, uh, in my situation, I'm never left wondering from any of those conversations, even if it's been a difficult, you know, um, not, not, an aggressive, not, not an aggressive conversation, but they can be, they can be tough conversations to have about a whole range of things, and, and it's best to put them on the table. So, yeah, and so you kn I've, I've never walked out of any of those uh, meetings or conversations I've had with any of the board members, or in particular Stephen and, and, and Rob, Rob Chapman. Um, I've been crystal clear, so it's, it's a good way. But it's no different to what our players expect, you know, from coach to player as well. It's just, it's probably no different to what you guys would expect in your, in your work environment as well. You know, you just want honest communication. What's your take on the, on the tackling so far? The, the season number, that's one thing. But is it a technique or is it an attitude? No, it would be easy to say, Ian. It would be easy to say, wouldn't it, that it's, you know, it's technique. And we, we've, uh, we're we looking at them closely. You know, and we, we want to be honest when we assess those. Because there are some times where it is a technique, but... Um, and you can, you, you, you can put up with those, but if the intent one is not there, that's the ones that you need to be really strong with. So... Um, it's a, it's a combination for us, and we need our intent to go up, as we as we do with the contested ball, which we were pretty happy with last week against Geelong with the contested ball aspect. But certainly our tackling, our tackling in particular, was still really poor. Ian Callan said, "Need to become mongrels." Well, it's agree? probably about the intent that what you know what uh, Ian's talking about. Call it what you like. I call it intent. You know, you actually got to, it's, an, it's an aggressive act tackling in our game, and uh, you've got to have an aggressive mindset to do it. You know, and that aggressive mindset can't waver throughout the game because otherwise you'll get yourself in a situation where a tackle needs to be made, and if the aggression is not there, you you know the chances of making it are not are not that high. Where's Ivan Marich at? You know, I mean, Brad Moran overlooked this week, maybe yeah. more flexibility, I presume. But where's Ivan yeah. Marich at? No, no, he's uh, still an important, in my opinion, and he's very much an important player and required player of our footy club. He's he's certainly vying you know for a ruck position, and uh, I'm continuing to play Sam Jacobs at the moment. Um, he could you know I could argue that he's also vying for a, a position that we're looking for someone who can do some ruck work, some forward line work, and ideally some some work in defence. You know that that flexible big man that we're looking for. Uh, in the past, we've tried Sean McKernan, and Sean's now going back to South Adelaide. We've had a good look at that. Uh, Brad Moran gets another opportunity tomorrow night to uh, to play in that position and hopefully demonstrate the flexibility that we're looking for. And it can be a difficult position because 
you know, to go to ruck and then go and play as a defender, then come off and maybe go and play as an attacking, you know, requires a good mindset to be able to do that. So it's not an easy position to play. Um, so I've, I've favoured uh, Brad over Ivan because of, I think, uh, the flexibility that Brad has at the moment. Ivan's working hard on that capacity to develop that flexibility uh, forward and back. But at the moment, uh, he's, he's really competing for, for the ruck position with Sam Jacobs. Brad, Brad last, Brad's last game yeah. wasn't up to standard. No, it was not. So what's changed? What have you... His form in the SNFL has been uh, pretty consistent, Corey. So, um, and, you know, we, I had that discussion with Brad against the uh, North Melbourne. And he was, he was understanding of that. He's gone back since then, and uh, his form in the SNFL has been really consistent in a variety of positions. So he gets he gets another opportunity. Does it make it difficult you know, building a young side, developing young players when they're in and out of the side so much? Do you prefer to have them staying consistent? Well, you prefer them to stay consistent, but I'm not going to sit here and, and allow any player to sit in our side, you know, if the performances don't warrant it after a period of time. And the buffer that uh, you might get as a young player could be different than a buffer like a Chris Knight's. Okay, so there's some flexibility in that. But we just, we just can't uh, keep, keep uh, selecting players if the form after a period of time doesn't warrant it. Yeah, I know uh, obviously every match you learn something about your squad. Was there anything out of the Geelong game that you learned that perhaps you didn't really know or maybe clarify something more to you about your team, seeing that they had probably their number of senior players missing, mm. if we're still able to play that well. Yeah, oh, well, that's, that's credit to Geelong. There's two things I take out of the Geelong game. Um, so I, I thought our first quarter was, I think Mick Dowdy's stated it, you know, it's probably the worst for the year, and I, and I agree with Mick on that. So that was really poor. And often when you have a game like that, and uh, I mean, at, what, 10 minutes in the last quarter, we're 80 points down, and yet we're able to sort of rally to a certain extent. So I learned that about our group as well. Now that that could have blown out to over 100 points easily, more maybe, but they were able to stay to the task. And even though the EM result was uh, insignificant, I guess uh, the fact that they they kept their their, their 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 spirit. So really poor first quarter. So we need to you know that's that's what we're capable of as as a group. But also the last quarter I thought was uh, needs to be recognised as well. I'm not sure if you heard during the week Neil Chris McDermott had a theory for one of a better term, I suppose, but I'll just get your response to his grand plan would be to maybe, he thinks maybe there is a, what he describes coaching fatigue, where the players might just be hearing the message from the same person. Is it time that maybe you obviously step shuffle sideways for a bit, have a bit of a bird's eye view, and maybe give your assistants some more rain, and, and maybe you're still overseeing the football department, and the, maybe on a match day relinquish a little bit of that role, and let the assistants take more rain? This year? Yes. Oh, OK. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. I mean, I, re I respect Chris's opinion, ex-captain of our footy club, so I'm happy to, to address it. Um, I mean, that's always a question, Ian, that uh, any coach will ask himself about, you know, is the message not getting there? And you, you get a feel for that, and at, I, I still believe the message is, but the reality is it's probably best to ask the players. Now, the obvious answer to that is, well, if I go and ask a player, you know, I mean, what's, what's he going to say? You know, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, the message is getting through. But you guys live in the real world. You've got your networks are extensive, okay, and you'll find that out from chatter from the players if if it's there. So you, you, your networks will tell you that. And if, if but I'd, I'd ask the players direct if I was you. Yeah. What are you learning about yourself with the adversity that you're going through, and you draw on things that. Uh so you learned from Jack Ogie to get through these difficult periods? Oh, I don't know if Jack felt... Well, I'm sure he did have some adversity, Graham, but he won five premierships in a row there at one stage. <laughs> no, but you were with him. Not then, I wouldn't. I'm sure I was. Yeah, I was with him. Um, what have I learned about myself? Uh, you've got to try and keep focused on the coaching task at hand because, you know, with all the... Uh, speculation and uh, and talk and you're going around which is there I'm not I'm not immune to that absolutely I'm not immune to it but the real challenge is to have the tools to sort of stay focused on on coaching I think I answered this question a week or two ago about you know I don't need to be driving in to work thinking about um with all due respect you know to a to a theory out there about 
a coaching structure. I don't need that. What I need to be thinking about is the team meeting we had this morning and the players I've got to talk to. So that's the real challenge from a coaching perspective. And, uh, you know, to the best of my ability at the moment, I think I'm doing that reasonably well, which much better than I would have, say, three or four years ago. I think so, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, well, just, you know, to be able to think clearly, you know, to check your thinking, um, uh, to keep, um, to, to still be firm and critical with what we're doing, but to, to have a degree of fairness, you know, so it's, because most of the information at the moment, whether it be about myself, whether it be about our playing group, whether it be about our club, is pretty negative. So I've got to make sure I have a responsibility as the senior coach to make sure that there's a balance in all that with, with the group that, we're, that I deal with. Yeah. That's uh, 15 minutes. So last one. So, yeah, just one more. Just on that Callum again. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's at a different level of SA and NFL, but have you had a chance to pick his brain a little bit and find anything out useful about the way the dogs have gone about their business yeah. at that level? Absolutely. That you found yeah. pretty useful? That's, yeah, well, he, had, he was very good in our debrief, Mark, on, um, on Tuesday. Yeah. I mean, as he should. You know, and don't, don't, don't fall for the trap that, uh, you know, concepts of success of, between AFL and SNFL are, are completely different. I mean, he comes out of an environment where they've won, what, nine out of the last 11 premierships. Uh, so he knows what success looks like. So he was, he, he was a great contributor. He was a one-game player, but a 28-year-old in, in our debrief on Tuesday, as, as he should be. And it was, it was, you know, all made sense to the playing group as well.